much. I appreciate that you clicked on this video and that you're taking some time to see what we're on about today. This is Cousin It, my Maxillaria variabilis, going or starting to go nuts on the bloom front. This is, we are, oh, way early on the blooming on this one. I am now on in December, first week of December. And normally he blooms last week of January is when his blooms start to show because I always remember it as my secondary firework display after New Year's. But Cousin It has had a lot, a lot of air time, a lot of camera time. And I think it has sparked him into getting inspired and producing blooms early. It is absolutely a spectacle. No matter where you look, there are buds forming, blooms already out, buds forming, and these will bloom sequentially up, up, up. Yeah, we're gonna have to do a little video on just Cousin It, right? I bet you're gonna love that. But he's out here today also because I want to show you the progress of my Fushu Glory Happy Holiday here. If you remember, this growth was weird and wonky and really, really off. Totally off of everything that Fushu Glory had to show for. It was chubby, it only had one leaf, it brought out a very thick spike that I did surgery on. Well, looky here, the buds have opened. So I'm gonna put you on a tripod and talk to you about what is going on here. This orchid is a first time bloomer for me. It is not a first time bloom for the orchid as such. There's an old sheath back in here. But for me, since she's been in my collection, first time. Now, normally first time blooms can look a little bit weird. But I have one bloom that looks a little bit weird. It's missing a certain <laughs> something. And that is normal, but it also looks quite bruised in the texture. I bring all this down to the fact that these blooms were challenged by the extreme weirdness of that solid rock hard sheath that I capped off at the top, which I normally do not do, but it was like slicing an egg. It was that hard. It wasn't an easy little snip or pinch. You know, I sometimes I pinch the top of the sheath just to crack it open. Not in this case, I literally had to take a knife and really work away to get the top open. So I'm understanding this deformity and this bruising to be from the experience they had in trying to even grow. The other two blooms, they're quite small. I expected them to be bigger, but you can also see that there is bruising in the petals here. And these blooms developed inside, so this is not cold damage. This is probably something where some people say, well, these are first time blooming woes. I'm not entirely sure about the fact it's a first time blooming woe, as this orchid has bloomed before, just not in my collection. For me, these are acclimating woes. I have no proof, except that the second growth now is growing beautifully, totally according to plan as a bifoliate, lush leaves. There are no distortions in this growth whatsoever, producing a stonking sheath in the middle here, and it's packed tight with buds. And I'm not actually going to interfere with that sheath at all, because this orchid has enough strength to push those buds out on her own. I could pinch the top if I want to, but I'm not going to. She is strong enough, I'm gonna leave her be and do her thing. But as you can see, for me, there's a difference between what is a first time bloomer and it comes maybe distorted like this one would be or bruised in the structure 
which could be sometimes can also happen when the orchid has been outside and then the cold temperatures got to it. That's not been the case. I have these buds all matured indoors. So you just saw me toss a blasted one and that was also to be expected when you move an orchid from one location to the other. This to me is acclimating woes. But the fragrance, the fragrance is astounding because on some first time bloomers, if that were the case, you don't even get a fragrance because they're just getting into their mojo. The fragrance of this one is so citrusy. Oh, it's so good. It has such a strong citrusy, pungent fragrance. Like when you squeeze a lemon and, and you get a bit of the, the essential oils up your nose, it's woof, you know, it's, it makes you step back a bit. <laughs> That's the fragrance of this. It's so powerful, absolutely delicious. Now, this is not going to be any orchid that I'm going to include in my bloom dedication because I do try to give blooms that are as pristine as possible that I can grow as a hobby grower. But I have to say, I am super pleased that I have some flaring going on, which is the catch of this Fushu Glory Happy Holiday. The fact that the petals have the yellow striations and the sepals as well. I am extremely interested to see what the next flush of buds will bring. I'm sure they're going to be a lot more pronounced, a lot more presentable, let's say. But as an example, as what is a first time bloomer? What are they, their woes? As opposed to what my opinion here is regarding the acclimating woes that we get can also be a big factor in blooms. But she is, she is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I hope that the next blooms, the markings will be a little bit more pronounced, but absolutely stunning, stunning. That lip with a contrasting orange yellow. I'm in love, I really am in love for a growth that looked like something out of The Hobbit. <laughs> I, I'm glad to have gotten a little sneak preview of what my next spike will produce. And I just wanted to share that with you. We can uh, definitely discuss how blooms develop and funky growth, or do blooms just go weird when the orchid is also having to acclimate? I'm thinking that there are differences. Both have similar symptoms, but both are not the same. So, thank you. If you found this interesting, let me know. Let me know your experiences. And I appreciate the time that you took to listen to me ramble away, show you how beautifully Cousin It is presenting himself already. And I hope that you all have a wonderful day. You're staying safe. Take care. Bye.